soon as I stopped trying to to get signed and make it in music is when I actually did. <laughs> um, at the time, I, I had quit my previous band. I was touring, trying to tour full time with that band, and it, we just weren't re really getting anywhere. And so um, <clears throat> I went back to college uh, to get my psychology degree. And during that, I just had to keep creating music just as a hobby, you know, for fun. Um, and yeah, so I got a band together when I heard uh, Agalock. inspired me to you know start ghost bath and then uh, yeah I just uh, did it my own way because I wasn't worried about you know oh this is what the labels will like or this is what the audience will like I was just doing it in my basement with my guitar and my computer basically <laughs> The band was originally just going to play like a couple of shows around in uh, North Dakota and then I wrote the EP just by myself using Fruity Loops is what I use and just a couple of plugins in my guitar. Um, and at the time I was really into this band called Silencer and they had like really high pitched like crazy sounding vocals. <laughs> So I decided just to put those vocals over it and when I showed the rest of the guys the EP, they are just like, no, that's like silly, it'll never, no one will ever like it, like I can't play this, I can't play this music like seriously basically is what their, their comments were. So I was like, alright, I'll just release it myself. And then uh, the bass player moved and everything so I'm like, okay, this will just be a solo project. And so right after that I started writing the first full length, Funeral, also by myself and I just released that. I'm from Minot, North Dakota, and uh, I think there was one black metal band when I was growing up called Viscera, and I mean, I thought they were really cool. <laughs> they like hammered nails through Bibles and stuff. <laughs> Originally, I, when I released the EP, I just didn't want anyone to know who I was. Um, kind of got the idea from Silencer again because they had like a mysterious backstory, like you don't know who the singer is, he's in a mental institution, all these kind of interesting things that just made me want to check out the band originally. And so, I don't know, I just wanted to remain anonymous, so I put, I, um, on Bandcamp you can't pick you can't leave the location blank, and which I would have done if I could have. I just put China instead. <laughs> and then uh, like shortly after I released the EP, this very small uh, Chinese label offered to press like the EP 50 copies to me. I was like, all right, yeah, let's do it. They pressed it, sent it over, and then I was working on Funeral, and he's like, oh, I know this a little uh, bigger Chinese label. Uh, Pest Productions, who puts out a lot of D DSBM type stuff. I was like, all right, let's do that. So m both of my albums came out in China. My 
favorite was uh, Vice. Like, she, <laughs> oh man, I like, I literally, like I told her, I'm like, just don't talk about the location, let's just talk about the music, the release, that kind of thing. And then when the article came out, like half the article is like a history of like China or something. <laughs> and then like immediately after it came out, like some people who knew who I was apparently like contacted her and they're like, oh, he's not from China, this and that. And then she got really mad. And she like emailed me, she's like, can I call you? Like my editors don't think you even exist. Like, and I was just like, no, nope. I was just like playing with her and trolling. I don't know. <laughs> I was just having fun with it at that point. You know? And I mean, I don't know, I didn't, I, I wasn't like airtight about hiding everything. Like I'd post on my own Facebook, like, oh, I'm working on some ghost bath stuff. I'd post videos. Like I wasn't like keeping it a super big secret. After Funeral started doing really well in like just the DSBM community and like people started really responding to it, I had like a thousand dollars saved up and I was like, all right, well, let's record something for real because all of this, this whole genre is really super rough and like unpolished recordings. And I, was, I just wanted to see what it'd be like to record something really pol polished and highly produced in the same genre. And so I went to Josh Schroeder in Michigan. I've recorded with him previously with my other bands. Yeah, it took three days and recorded Moon Lover said I only had a thousand dollars, so. Yeah, the vocals were always just an instrument. I w do not have lyrics that I'm screaming. I'm just uh, like Sigur Rose, like we talked about earlier. Um, I really liked that idea of it just singing what they felt went with the song at the time. Um, and I also think sometimes, not all the time, that like lyrics can take away from the music, um, kind of directing the listener to what they should be thinking about or whatever the lyrics you're talking about, that's what they're gonna be focused on. And without that, it's basically like an open canvas for whatever you wanna interpret it as.